one of the fascinating things about this project, about the images we show and interpret, is that they're all the past. They're all images of the past, and yet they're in our present. In a way, the, the past doesn't escape us. It, and it isn't something we should be running to escape. There's something about the spirit, particularly of the United States, but generally Western culture, that there are new beginnings, uh, lots of new beginnings. Look how many times the city of Tokyo had to have new beginnings, but we also see the trauma of the, of the destructions. Someone once said, me, said to me about images, whether they're photographs or prints, and particularly the Japanese prints we're looking at. There are no innocent places. Be careful when you look at these print images because they're chosen for a reason. Oh, and some of them are very romantic. Yeah. They're very romanticized. And they don't show what Japan is doing in China. They don't do that. And that's absolutely true. Right. It's also true of images of any place at any time. You romanticize or you demonize. And the complexity is something you have to get at. But the dreams that are going on in Japan in the 1920s and 30s, the dreaming, mm -hmm. and there are popular songs. In 1936, there's a popular song called Tokyo Rhapsody. 1936, sold 350,000 vinyl copies of the record. They immediately rushed out and made a movie of it. Now, at that moment, Japan was, the militarists were tightening their hold. There had been a coup that attempted a military coup to overthrow the government. After 1936, authoritarianism really clamps down. But Tokyo Rhapsody is full of happy place, city of pleasure, city of love, city of dreams. And you, it captures that sense. Many of the images that we see in this MOOC show a kind of schizophrenia, welcoming new things, new ideas, new ways of doing things, an ambiguity about them, a frenetic celebration of them, and something that ultimately ends in destruction. Simultaneous with some of the uh, production of the prints we're seeing, there was an increase in visual propaganda, both in prints, paintings, and in films. There's much that, that is in this basket called uh, 1868 to, to 1945. I think it's fair to note, too, that we sit here as two Caucasian gentlemen of a certain age telling people about Japanese history as it's shown in visuals. And the idea of, of this program of, and of using things like visualizing cultures is to look at it yourself. See what you can do and bring together on it.